Hi everyone, we are going to start a brand new unit today on statistics. So this is an exciting unit because it's very applicable to the real world. Um, there are people who actually do this as a career, they're statisticians. Um, and so we're going to have some good conversations. You can talk to your parents about things like this at home. Um, if you have ideas, you can email me, but I think you're going to find this to be an interesting topic. So we're going to start with talking about sampling a population. So there's some new vocab that you're going to hear me talk about throughout the unit. Um, and first things first is what is statistics? So it's collecting, organizing, and interpreting data to make generalizations about a population. So that brings us to, well, what is a population? And a population is the group of interest being studied. So as an example, if I wanted to know what subject um, seventh graders in New York State liked the most, seventh graders in New York State would be my population. But it'd be really tricky for me to conduct a survey that asked every seventh grader in New York State what their favorite subject was. So if I were going to actually do this, I would want to choose a sample, which I know I'm skipping survey, but I go down a sample, it's a smaller group surveyed from the population that saves time and money. Okay, so it would take me a long time to go and figure out a way to survey every seventh grader in New York State. So I would take a sample, which is a part of that population, and ask them that question. So a survey is a method of collecting the information or data. So I would have to, after I chose my sample, I'd have to figure out how I was going to survey these um, these people. I could do an online survey, I could do a survey in the mail, so it's just a way that you're going to collect the information. So when you think about a sample, we can't just pick any group of people as our sample. We have to be thoughtful about who we pick, and so one of the discussions we'll have is, is the sample that you choose representative of your population? So the next definition here is a representative sample is a portion of the population that is similar to the entire population. So going back to my example about knowing seventh graders favorite subject, I wouldn't go and ask third graders what their favorite subject is. That's not representative of what I'm trying to find out. Okay, so the next thing that we need to avoid actually is something called a biased sample. And this is when some members of the population have a greater chance of being selected for the sample than other members. So it does not fairly represent the population. Okay, so this might be, you know, if I decide that seventh graders in Calkins Road Middle School is going, they're going to be my sample, a biased sample might be to only ask the seventh graders on blue team because obviously they would say math was their favorite subject, and so that is definitely biased. I would have to make sure that I'm asking, you know, a couple, a handful of kids from every seventh grade team so that it's not biased, because maybe on another team, they like science more. You know, you never know, so. <laughs> um, and the last thing is a random sample. So this means that each individual in the population has an equal chance of being part of the sample. Um, so that seems kind of self-explanatory. You don't want to have it so that one person is more likely to be chosen than another. You know, I don't want to say someone in period 5 math is more likely to be chosen than someone in period 6 math. Everybody should have the same uh, chance of being chosen for the sample. Okay, so those are some important vocab words. So let's talk about how we decide whether something is a population or a sample. So example one says, for each survey topic, determine which set represents the population and which represents a sample of the population. So the first survey topic is dress code changes. In set A, we have the students in a middle school, and in set B, we have the seventh graders in the middle school. So with this, you can think about, you know, usually which group is larger, which group is smaller. The larger group is typically the population, the smaller group would be the sample. So in this case, set A, the students in the middle school, that would be our population. All the kids in one school. And the sample would be just the seventh graders in that middle school. 
Okay, if we had a survey topic of favorite flavors of ice cream, set A, the customers at an ice cream shop versus the residents of a town. So in this case, it's just the reverse. The residents of the town would be the population. So that's like everybody. And then the customers at an ice cream shop, that would be your sample. Smaller group within the population. Okay, for number two, Logan wants to survey students in his school about their favorite and least favorite pizza toppings. Describe a possible sample Logan can survey instead of surveying the entire school. So I want you to think about this for a second. Who might you choose to survey if you were to ask this question? Because you wouldn't want to survey every single student in our school. So what would make it be representative, um, unbiased, and random. Okay, so I'm just going to throw out some things that you might not want to do. So if you chose to ask, um, you know, your friends that play on your basketball team, that really isn't representative because, especially if it's not a school team, you're not even talking about your um, your peers in your school or maybe you ask your family members okay so those are examples of something that's not representative um, if you chose to ask let's say people in your first period PE class that would not be representative that would not be random so we really have to make sure every student in the school has an equal chance of being chosen to take this survey. So one thing I said that might be a good way is to survey every 10th student that enters the cafeteria before lunch. Um, so everybody goes into the, well, I say everybody, most kids will go into the cafeteria at lunchtime. They'll walk into the cafeteria. If they leave, that's fine. But eventually at some point during lunch they're going to be walking in and so if I ask every tenth person that walks in the cafeteria this question that covers all of my bases it's representative because they're all students in the school it's unbiased because everybody has an equal chance of being chosen and it's also random for that reason I'm going to say he could survey Every tenth student enters the cafeteria. And obviously there are many other ways that you can choose a sample, so this is definitely not the only way. This is just my idea. Okay, example three, we're going to decide whether each of the following are good samples. And we're going to explain, I'll explain, why we chose that. So the first one, every third shopper at a clothing store is asked their favorite baseball team. Okay, um, in my opinion, I think that is a good sample. It doesn't seem biased in any way. Just because they're shopping at a clothing store doesn't mean that we're going to sway their opinion any which way. Um, I'm asking every third shopper, so it gives me a variety of people. I think that's a good sample. For the second one, every third shopper at a pet store is asked whether he or she owns a pet. Okay, so in my opinion, I think that is not a good sample because chances are if that shopper is in a pet store, they probably own a pet, okay, or they're maybe getting a pet. Um, and so that seems a little biased. For the third one, at the beach in the summer, 150 people are asked their favorite vacation spot. Well, if you're at the beach and you're asking people their favorite vacation spot, there is a good chance that they are going to say at the beach. So I would have to say that it is not a good sample. And the last one, a survey is mailed to 50 homes in town asking residents to name their favorite movie. So for this, I think this would be a good sample. You are sending out um, surveys to it seems like random people around town and there doesn't seem to be any bias there. Okay, so let's turn the page. 
We are going to talk more specifically about different types of biased and unbiased samples. So there's two types of samples that are unbiased that we're going to learn about. Um, so it says to get valid results, a sample must be chosen very carefully. An unbiased sample is selected so that it accurately represents the entire population. So the first type of unbiased sample is a simple random sample. And this is when each item or person in the population is as likely to be chosen as any other. So for example, each student's name is written on a piece of paper, the names are placed in a bowl, and names are picked without looking. Okay, so this is similar to my classroom, how I have the popsicle sticks, right? Everybody has their name on a popsicle stick, and so it is a simple random sample who I choose to answer the question or come up to the board or whatever it may be. Okay, so that's kind of a classic example of a simple random sample. The second type of unbiased sample is called a systematic random sample. And this is when the items or people are selected according to a specific time or item interval. So for example, every 20th person is chosen from an alphabetical list of all students attending a school. Okay, so this kind of goes back to my example on the front when I had said I would survey every 10th person coming into the cafeteria. That would be considered a systematic random sample because I have a system. I'm asking every 10th person. So typically with those, you're going to see something about asking, you know, every 20th person or whatever they decide to do. So those are the two good samples. Those are unbiased. They're, they're good choices for sampling. So now let's talk about two that are biased or not good choices for sampling. The first one is a convenience sample. So a convenience sample consists of members of a population that are easily accessed. For example, to represent all the students attending a school, the principal surveys the students in one math class. So if you think about that example, that's convenient for the principal because all he has to worry about is asking one math class how they feel. When in reality, the principal probably should have sampled a couple people from each math class in the building. Okay, so convenience is when you do some sampling that makes it easy for you versus getting something that's representative. Okay, and the second one that is biased is the voluntary response sample. So a voluntary response sample involves only those who want to participate in the sampling. For example, students at a school who wish to express their opinions complete an online survey. Okay, so I always say these are um, these surveys usually end up being people who, who feel strongly one way or the other. Those are the people that respond. So if I put a survey out and I said, okay, pick up one of these surveys if you would like to tell me about um, if you think we should have homework in math class. Okay, so the people who feel strongly one way or the other, so there might be people who say, absolutely not, we shouldn't have any math homework they're going to pick up a survey and they're going to say that on the survey. Or maybe you have the other end of the spectrum where you have people who say, yes, we need to have homework every single day. It's very important. But the people who don't really care probably won't even bother picking up the survey. So voluntary response isn't great because you tend to get the extremes where if you tell people they have to take the survey, it'll be more representative. Okay, a perfect example of this is, you know, when you, I don't know if you've experienced this before, I know I have, if I call and talk to a company, let's say I'm on the phone with Verizon, and they say, would you mind staying on the line to complete a survey? Okay, so, not going to lie, 90% of the time, I won't complete the survey because I have other things I need to get to. But if my call didn't go well, or they didn't you know, do what they need to do for me, maybe I would stand the line and say, this is what happened. Um, I'm not happy. And so those vol voluntary response samples sometimes aren't the best. Um, another example would be if someone calls your house and says, hi, can I ask you a few questions? And how many people do you know that just say click and they hang up? Um, so it's tricky. It's tricky to get people to to answer your survey questions unless it's a different type of um, survey method. Okay, so I'm going to scroll down here. We're going to do couple multiple choice and then that's going to be it. So it says choose one choice for each example and discuss why the other choices are not the best choice. 
advice. Okay, so number one, Michelle wants to survey her age group about which type of music they prefer to listen to. Which sample would give the most representative, unbiased sample? A, survey every 20th person who walks into the mall. Survey every 20th student who walks into her school one morning. C, survey 20 people around her at a Justin Bieber concert. Or D, survey her family and friends at her birthday party. Okay, so let's go through choice by choice. In choice A, every 20th person is great. That's a systematic random sample. But the problem is she's asking people who walk into the mall. And she specifically says she wants to survey her age group. And so people walking into the mall are all different ages. They're not just her age group. So I'm going to say that A would not be a good choice. Survey every 20th student who walks into her school one morning. Now that to me seems like it would be the best choice. Let's make sure the other ones are not. Survey 20 people around her at a Justin Bieber concert. Well, if you're at a Justin Bieber concert, you probably like Justin Bieber. And so that seems a little bit biased for somebody to say what type of music they listen to. So I'm gonna say no, choice C is out. Survey her family and friends at her birthday party. Um, to me, that seems like it's a convenient sample. She's just asking whoever's there at her party, and it also goes back to the age group thing. Not, ever, not all of her family and friends are her age. So I think B is the best choice for number one. Okay, number two, Lewis wants to know what people's favorite leisurely activity is. He decides to give a survey to find out what is the best sample for Lewis to use. Choice A, survey the first 10 people he sees at the beach. Choice B, survey every other person he sees at the park. Choice C, put out a survey that people can pick up and fill out at the library. Or choice D, ask every 10th person who walks into Wegmans. Okay, so for choice A, um, to me that seems a little biased because if they're spending time at the beach, I'm guessing they're gonna say their favorite leisurely activity is being at the beach. So that doesn't seem very representative or random. Survey every other person he sees at the park. Again, seems a little biased that he's only asking people at the park because that seems like a leisurely activity to me. Put out a survey that people can pick up and fill out at the library. So I think a couple things are wrong with this. It's a voluntary response. Not many people will choose to do this would be my guess. Um, and the library could be a leisurely activity. So I think D is the best choice for this. You're at Wegmans. People don't usually go to Wegmans as, as a leisurely activity. Um, and it's every 10th person and that is a systematic sample. So that would be the best choice.